This is it. This is the LG G6. Many have called it LG's personal best, the first true flagship smartphone of 2017, a good sort of that's it, and even a throwback of Leica G6. However, you came to this video seeking my thoughts, or maybe you just clicked on this accidentally. Either way, I'm going to give you my personal opinion on LG's newest flagship, so let's jump right in. Right off the bat, LG dropped the whole modular design thing found on the G5, which at the time was a huge risk, but they brought something new to the table. Fast forward to 2017 and LG has now stuck to the fundamentals, playing it safe, but listening to what the people want. In result, they brought us an aluminum and glass build with brushed metal on the sides and a completely flush back for a seamless design. Using this phone on a flat surface is great because it won't wobble around when you're tapping on the screen. The placement of the fingerprint sensor slash lock button is perfect as well and is very tactile. However, the volume keys could use some work. They're just a bit too high for my fingers and also feel relatively soft when pressed upon. Still, it's definitely a good looking device, feels very comfortable in the hand, and that slightly curved glass pane on the back brings a nice soft touch for that cherry on top. It's also a fingerprint magnet, but that goes with almost every glass and case device. I always solve this issue by slapping a slick wrap skin on the back. It provides a nice textured feel, adds a bit more grip, and makes the phone a bit more of my style. It's a clean and easy install and a great alternative if you don't want to use a case. I'll drop a link down below. Now the fastest way to unlock the phone is with the fingerprint sensor found on the back. Merely placing your finger over the sensor unlocks it pretty fast and it recognizes multiple tips really well. It still acts as the lock button which is fine, but I'd prefer a traditional power key instead as I like to check my notifications without unlocking the screen. When you unlock the phone, you immediately notice how big the display is. It's a 5.7 inch Quad HD LCD display, but it's not like any other huge screen device. Even though it's a huge panel, it still works great with one-handed use as they made it taller in size instead of wider. This provides some pretty small bezels giving the phone an aspect ratio of 18 by 9. So now when you're navigating through apps, more information is shown. The camera app has your recent pictures at the top so you don't have to leave the viewfinder. Stacking two apps on the screen is much more useful and watching videos on Netflix or Google Play Movies is phenomenal. Still, some apps such as YouTube or some games don't provide true full screen scaling, so you will have those black bars on the sides. Luckily, you have the option of changing them to compatibility mode 16x9 or even extend them to full screen 18x9 if you want, so that's nice. You should also note that the corners are now rounded instead of squared. LG claims that they implemented this as it makes the screen more durable against corner impacts. It has great viewing angles, gets really bright or low when you want it to, and all those pixels do look amazing on this tall panel. As for the software, the model I'm using has Android 7.0 with the usual LG skin on top, but it should have 7.1 once it comes to the US. The UI design modifications are not too bad, so if you used an Android before, you should be able to navigate the interface just fine. You have some nice additions such as the option to change the overall theme, customize the navigation bar to change the color, rearrange the buttons, and even add in some new ones for additional features. And always on display with an analog clock or signature and your incoming notifications, but it can affect your battery life as it's always there when the phone is locked. Some lock screen unlocking animations, application scaling, comfort view to reduce eye strain, and LG's home screen, which shows all your apps on the home page without an app drawer, or you can switch to the more traditional home and app drawer home screen found within the settings. My favorite part about LG's home screen is their option to search for apps and see plenty of information such as messages or emails just by swiping down on the home page. I did end up installing Nova Launcher and replace the keyboard with Gboard for a more traditional Android feel. However, the interface is still minimalistic and clean working well with the heightened display. Sure, they couldn't get Qualcomm's latest chipset, the Snapdragon 835, but the A21 still provides a smooth experience with four gigabytes of RAM as well. Application real time is quick, animations are buttery smooth, and navigating through the apps is snappy. I will say that it doesn't feel as fast as the OnePlus 3T or Google Pixel, but without a doubt, this is not a slow phone at all. When listening to music or watching a video, the bottom firing speaker gets really loud and sounds quite nice at its high points. It's not front facing, which is not a huge problem if you tend to use headphones more often anyways, but it's good to know that it works well when you're out and about. Switching over to the cameras, the G6 comes packed with dual 13 megapixel sensors, one for standard pics and another for wider shots. I do enjoy taking pictures at a much wider angle as it provides stunning scenery and it's great for getting everyone in the photo. 
Sometimes it will give you a fisheye effect as you're shooting at 125 degrees, but most of the time they still look good. Usually the color reproduction is well balanced, contrast is on point, and everything looks vivid and crisp. Even in low light conditions, you receive similar results with a bit of softening. Just keep in mind that the wide lens doesn't have optical image stabilization, so videos will be a little shaky and aperture is a bit smaller in size. Another small complaint is that LG's processing is a bit aggressive, making some objects in certain photos photos look fake when you crop in. Still, this only happens on some pictures and you won't be able to tell unless you zoom in on each photo and try to look for the defects. You also have some new features in the viewfinder such as the camera carousel, pinch to zoom to switch between the dual rear cameras, and a few new modes. Overall, this is a solid camera that takes decent pictures when you need it to. Powering all this is a 3300 milliamp hour battery, getting me around three hours of screen on time in heavy usage with my Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and GPS being enabled at all times for Google Maps, my second generation Moto 360, and my Snapchat spectacles. Overall, your battery results may not match mine, but I can't say I'm overly impressed with the battery life. Sure, it'll last me an entire day, but towards the end, I'll be left with five to 10%, so don't forget to charge this device overnight. Don't get me wrong, it's not a bad battery, but it's not amazing either. It's acceptable. At least it has quick charge 3.0 and wireless charging to juice it up pretty quick. Other things to know about the G6 is that it's water resistant with an IP68 certification so you can dunk this thing in a bowl of water and it will work just fine. Has NFC, supports all four major US carriers, a micro SD card slot, and a headphone jack. All features we love seeing on a smartphone nowadays. The G6 will cost between $650 to a little over $700 depending on your carrier or retailer. It's definitely a top-notch device that has good performance, fast fingerprint sensor, unique software features, and some decent cameras. LG is obviously trying to compete with the upcoming Galaxy S8, and I think they will have a good stance as being the cheaper alternative with solid specs, but it won't be the best phone you can get. In the end, I'll just title the LG G6 as a great flagship alternative. That's my full review of LG's newest flagship. Drop a like if you enjoyed and let me know in the comments what you think about the G6. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more Android content and I will catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!